through our Coach Tell and Join PhD program. I understand you are the master of research students, but not everybody going to progress to PhD. But if you do want to progress to PhD, this is something you might think about a little bit ahead when you plan your uh, research career. So Macquarie University have the largest Coach Tell and Join PhD program in the country. We have nearly 300 candidates and working with about 110 universities in 30 uh, countries around the world. Um, the number one country for culture talent joint PhD is Germany and China. So Europe is taking 65% of our culture talent joint PhD. And our footprint is around the world. It's really um, large majorities concentrated in Europe, but Asia is a fast growing region. We're working with China, South Korea, Thailand, Japan, Malaysia, and Indonesia as well. So we have a, some new partners on board. And also Latin America and North America, in Canada, United States, in Latin America, in Mexico, Brazil, Chile, Uruguay, uh, Argentina, and also in um, uh, Colombia. And, those. and also in Africa, we're working with, an, at the moment, we're working with three universities in South Africa, the University of, Petor, uh, University of Cape Town, Stellenbosch University and also uh, the Northwest University in South Africa as well. So we have a two different type of the um, PhD program. One is culture tell. What's the difference between culture tell and joint PhD? The major difference is about examination. The joint PhD you will be jointly, so both you have to spend half the time in your home university, half the time in your host university and then you spend half the time in each university, you have supervisors in each university, and when you go into the examination, if you're doing culture tell, you have two separate examinations, and they're independent, but they refer to each other. And join PhD, you have only one, whoever is the leading institution, and they will do the examination. The other university will acknowledge that as well. So every faculty, so I'll just, every faculty will do um, culture tell and join PhD uh, at Macquarie as well. So why we want to do the internationalized, why we want to have an MRES program is become internationalized program and want to progress you to PhD. As I mentioned, this country is very small. We only have 0.04% of the world population. We contribute about 4% of the world knowledge. So we have to collaborate. So we work and we can't, no university in Australia or in the world can do everything. So we have to collaborate. And also we know a lot of those advanced knowledge is through the international collaboration and you build up your research career. And it's faster and it's more uh, give you the infrastructure, give you the funding, give you the employment opportunity around the world as well. One of the program and we want to highlight today is the Idea Lab program. So this program with the Macquarie University is the only university in Australia, part of the, the Horizon 20, the European Commission's largest program called Horizon 2020. And there's five universities involved, and students will be concurrently enrolled in five universities. And that's leading by Potsdam University in Germany, Groningen in Netherlands, Trento in Italy, Newcastle in UK, and Macquarie University. So students have to choose home universities, host universities, mobility universities. Currently, there's about 20 or 30 Idea Lab students coming from all these five universities at Macquarie at the moment doing the summer school and winter school. So it's a winter school in, in Europe and summer school for Australia. So they're here at the moment. So when students graduate, they will have a certificate with five universities. The second project I want to highlight is about Hamburg, Fudan, and Macquarie University. This is funded by the DAD program and the three universities form this strategic partnership in 12 different disciplines. And then we jointly train PhDs and we're also doing Master of Research Exchange program. If you're doing business economics, and then there's an opportunity for you to go to Hamburg University for exchange. So if you're interested in that, and talk to the colleague from Hamburg University, find out. It's a beautiful city and beautiful university. It's really well regarded. And also make sure you talk to Belinda, or myself, or Louise, or Jordan as well. So this is the degree you're going to get for the Culture Tell program. This is with Paris Suit 11. So it's a Macquarie degree, and here we will acknowledge our partner universities. This is a joint PhD with University of Edinburgh. So both universities will be on the same certificate as well. So that's the difference as well. 
And this is the program with the European Commission's funding with five universities in one degree. So I'll just quickly go through the, um, um, the AMRES exchange program. The AMRES exchange program is also aligned. Most of our partners is developed based on our in, uh, Culture Tail and Join PhD partners. We have about 110 Culture Tail and Join PhD partners, but we only just started and doing to build the Master of Research partners. So if you're interested in the university, in your discipline, and then you're interested to do exchange, you can talk to us, have a look at our Culture Tail and Join PhD partners, and if on that list, we're happy to develop some new Master of Research for you as well. Um, so application process, and you can contact Belinda, and then it's on the website, but if you're interested in do the MRS exchange, around the world with particular university, contact Belinda during the morning tea, and then they need approval from your supervisor. So the main thing is the, the exchange have to build into your program and you know, to enhance your experience. So have to be approved by your supervisor, by the department, by the faculty, and then to the central level as well. So we will look after, with our partners, look after your uh, pastoral care as well. So currently we have all the uh, AMRES Exchange University, U University of Potsdam, University of Heidelberg in Germany, uh, Gießen, Göttingen. Um, in France, we have Lyon. And Israel, we have Tel Aviv, and also uh, Jerusalem University. In China, we just signed an agreement with East China Normal University, uh, Dalian University of Technology, and also there's Fudan University as well. So those are not limited to those universities because those are the uh, universities that we already have students in those places. But if you're interested in those universities on our culture tell list, and now we're happy to develop more for you as well. So all the forms and all those things is on the website, and the partner university, as I said, is also on the website. And if you're interested, make sure you talk to um, Belinda and Jordan as well. Um, the tuition fee, so when you're doing your exchange, you pay your tuition, so whatever you, your arrangement with it. So if you're an outbound student from Macquarie University going to other university, you don't have to pay the fees in the host university. All you need to do is organize the travel and also for uh, some accommodation and all the normal costs as well. There are some scholarships available for the Master of Research Exchange uh, program. It depends on which university, some uh, host university, and give some funding to exchange candidates. Uh, we can talk to you about that. And some of them, you can apply different fundings in the different organizations as well. But in general, you have to pay for the uh, travel and you have to uh, pay for the living cost in the partner institution as well. So, but you don't have to pay any fees. So that's pretty much, I quickly go through um, the, because we're aware we're probably a bit late for that. So Nick, do I have one minute for one question? Is there any, I'll just quickly, if there any question, one question? Yeah, I rushed through because I just don't want to delay the thing. Any questions? No questions, but you can always ask us during the morning tea or any time you're interested and send us the email and Belinda, Jordan and Louise and well, myself will maybe, be here as well. Maybe just to, to clarify, so if people were interested in exchange, when would they be planning to do it in their candidature? I think we try to facilitate it in the year one and year two, both, you can do both, but the main thing is you need to talk to your supervisor and the faculty because the exchange program have to fit into your program here as well. It really depends on the faculty and the department and your research interests as well. So I wouldn't just say one size fits all. We look every single individual cases um, as an individual case. I think the supervisor, make sure if you're interested, talk to your department, talk to your supervisor first. Um, I think that's a critical point. And, you know, oh, what with, yeah, the, the director, uh, the departmental director or your MRES director in the faculty level. So they should be the first point of contact. Or if you are in the second year of the uh, MRES program, talk to your supervisor because you, they have to agree for you to go exchange as well. So those are the key contacts. Your supervisor, the faculty, MRES uh, directors, they should be your first point of contact. The obvious assumption is as far as year one is concerned, 
that the collaborative uh, university yep. run very, very similar uh, coursework? Depends on the discipline. Okay. Not all the yeah. disciplines. Some of those countries don't have English program. Okay. So that really depends on some of the disciplines. Those Chinese university and German university have the English program. And sometimes if you understand Chinese or German, you can go to their local language program as well. So it really depends. We have to look case by case. Yeah, but that's true. I mean that most of the programs here would be taught in English. So yes. most European master's programs are taught in English and not in the local language. So mm -hmm. that wouldn't be a barrier. Um, but, and, and we have negotiated agreements with these institutions focusing on individual disciplines. So they've only signed up to these agreements because they believe that both universities have relevant coursework. So if you were planning, to, if I understand your question, if you were planning to go on exchange during the research phase of your project, yeah, you can do that. Well, you? you can do that, but in the research phase that you ha also have to have a supervisor who is interested and also have expertise in your area. So that's even more, we have to not only drill down to the uh, program level, but also to the individual level. But most of the time, if your supervisor are already collaborating, so this is the beauty of our strategic partnerships and all our internationalization. 50% of our paper are international collaborated. So it's more likely your supervisor are already working with someone in those universities. So that's why your supervisor is a key point of contact. And just, I mean, just one final point. I mean, the, the logic of the connection with the Cochitel is that uh, the Cochitel PhD is this really enriching experience of doing your PhD in two institutions in two countries at the same time. And really the fundamental aim of the MRES exchange is to allow you to meet, to go to another institution, to meet other researchers and start to plan a Cochitel PhD further down the track. So you'd be going down, you'd be having a great experience, but while, while we're there you'd be really checking out the possibility of, of doing a PhD, a Cochitel PhD down the track. So we're hoping the colleague from um, Hamburg is doing MRS exchange and maybe you think considering doing a joint PhD be when you finish your master's degree. Okay, I've just got a couple more, five more minutes. Any other questions either for me or for Ren? You had a question? <laughs> I don't know. Um, who can answer that question? Um, I think, I mean, I think the, the, the way that the, the degree is set up is that um, we were hoping to maximize the flexibility of the program you put together. So um, if, you, if you wanted to, you could try and put together a program from a variety of different departments. It does need academic approval. So, um, so we won't, won't allow you just to do anything. And you won't be allowed to do units where it's not felt that you have the preparation. So you can't do advanced maths if your background is in English literature, for example. Or, you know, you know you'd be surprised what people want to put together. Um, but um, and you can understand the logic behind that. But I mean, I think, I, I don't think that there's, there's really any obstacle to you doing that. If you even need to do, right. Right. Yeah, no, I think that that's possible. I mean, what you need to do is talk to the, uh, talk to Professor uh, Annabel uh, Lucan, who's the MRES Director in Human Sciences, and she should be able to, to give you some guidance with that. But I don't think there's any obstacle at all. Interdisciplinary research, I mean, the disciplines that we've inherited, you know, um, that, that at where academic work gets allocated into, into um, pigeonholes aren't just, you know, brick, there aren't just brick walls between them. Um, the university, the government, in fact, also encourages interdisciplinary research as much as possible. Now, that's not always easy to do because each discipline has its own traditions and its own way of doing things. But it is certainly something that we're looking at people to break down those barriers and to look at connections across the disciplines. So, any other questions?